Good evening, planet Earth. So, uh, a lot of you have asked what I do here in my physics classes uh, and stuff. Um, so, I've decided to use this video to do, uh, to show you a project, an extra credit project that I took on uh, last semester for a class, uh, Physics of Energy A21, um, that I, I think I had actually mentioned in some of my videos, uh, where I was trying to calculate um, when it is energetically advantageous for a tree to drop its leaves. Um, a, the, the amount of, obviously, a tree's energy, a tree produces energy from sunlight, and sunlight varies throughout the day and throughout the year. Uh, and throughout the year, it looks something like this. Um, kind of a, a sine wave, uh, Gaussian type, type curve. Um, and <clears throat> obviously the tree needs energy all year, but it can store energy also and you to use during the winter when it doesn't have leaves. So the question is, what, at what point does the amount of energy the tree needs, which, you know, let's say it's about constant, so about like that, at what point uh, are the leaves taking more energy from the tree to just maintain and keep healthy than is being produced by the leaf? Uh, so you'll be looking at that point there, um, since here this is would be spring, right? Um, so uh, I'm gonna start, I guess. Um, so <clears throat> through, uh, as I mentioned, uh, so a physics problem typically when you're approaching a, a physics problem, um, it is a lot of math and calculation. But the key, if you can at the beginning understand what physically it is you're trying to figure out figure out what in the system you need to look at and examine, and then go through and do all the math. Um, so this time, in order to figure out what point that is, right, we know a tree drop its, drops its leaves in fall, sometime in fall. Uh, so if the math tells us that, in, in, in regarding energy, uh, in terms of energy, a tree should drop its leaves sometime in the fall, then that's great, and that means that energy is indeed a driving factor behind abscission. Uh, which is when a tree drops its leaves. Um, if, however, the math tells us it should be either before or after what we actually see, then this means that the tree has some kind of compelling reason to either drop its leaves early, maybe a lack of sunlight triggers some kind of a chemical reaction which accelerates the uh, abscission, um, or if it drops it later, then that means that perhaps there's some kind of advantage uh, to keeping leaves longer than it would be advantageous looking purely at energy. So. <clears throat> It, to, to actually figure out this point, we're going to have to figure out how much sunlight a tree gets per day. And remember that this varies from morning to night. And then also figure out how that varies over the entire year. So, for those of you familiar with calculus, we're going to be doing two integrations. One throughout the day and one over the entire year. Um, and you'll kind of see what it is I'm doing as we, we move on. So. Some, of the, some equations we're going to be working with. Um, this one here, uh, this stands for insul insulation. Not insulate, like you insulate a house, but insolation, S-O-L, uh, which is the intensity of energy coming from the sun. Um, it's equal to, it varies over the course of the day, and it is equal to, and also the course of the year actually, uh, so it's equal to I naught, which is uh, 1,366 uh, watts per meter squared, uh, and then times cosine of beta. Beta, you can see here, beta is the angle that the sun makes with the plant. If you, 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 you look at a very small surface, right, of the earth, and it, it approximates a flat surface. Uh, so what angle of, in the sky is the sun? Um, and we're concerned with the component of that uh, energy vector that is vertical. Because leaves, you know, we're kind of neglecting the fact that leaves do bend up a little bit towards the sun. We're assuming they're just, you know, flat. So that's going to be, if this angle is beta, then this component will be cosine beta. So we have I equals I naught cosine beta. Um, but what is cos, how do you figure out that angle? Because it varies throughout the day and year. So you can probably figure out, I think, just name off a few things that it will vary depending on. Uh, it should be a function of what latitude you're at. It should be a function of... Uh, the tilt of the Earth's axis, and it should be a function of the time of year. 
So we look and that's actually the case. Uh, cosine of beta is going to be equal to uh, sine of latitude, which is latitude we're uh, using lambda, uh, and we're going to use the latitude of Boston, which is 42.3 degrees, uh, times the sine of delta. Delta is the declination. Um, and to demonstrate what that is, declination is where the sun is in with respect to uh, the Earth's equator. Uh, so if you draw a flat, a, f a straight line, flat line from the center of the Earth, and then find the angle that the sun, which is somewhere over here, uh, the sun makes to that line, that is your declination. Um, and to calculate declination, right, it, it depends on the axis of the Earth and also on the time of year, because the Earth is going to be going around the sun, so it's tilt. It, it, the sun will be hitting different parts of it. So sine of delta is equal to the sine of epsilon times the sine of alpha. Epsilon is the tilt of the Earth, which is currently 23.45 degrees, and alpha is 2 pi n over 365.24 uh, days. Uh, n is the number of days since uh, the uh, summer solstice, summer equinox time. Um, uh, so we have delta, we have lambda, and over here you have more deltas and lambdas, and then you have times cosine omega t. Omega is the frequency of the Earth, which is 2 pi over 24 hours. And we're going to use that when it is uh, omega is outside of a trigonometric function. When omega is inside of a trigonometric function, we want it in terms of degrees. So we're going to have 360 degrees over 24, which is 15. Um, so those are all the equations we're going to be working with. So as I mentioned, what we want to do is find how sunlight varies from uh, morning to night, sunrise to sunset, and then over the course of the year. So from sunrise to sunset, this angle beta is going to change, right? At sunrise, it will be like that. And at sunset, it will be like that. So at sunrise, it's going to be uh, pi over 2, or negative pi over 2. And then you'll also have pi over 2 at sunset. And cosine of pi over 2 equals cosine of negative pi over 2 uh, equals 0. So I'm going to erase some of this. And we can set this whole equation equal to 0, cosine beta equals 0. So we're going to have that 0 equals sine lambda sine delta plus cosine lambda cosine delta cosine omega t. And then we can subtract sine lambda sine delta from this side of the equation and then divide by cosine lambda cosine delta and sine over cosine is tangent. So you end up with uh, negative tangent lambda tangent delta is equal to cosine omega t. Um, delta, I'm going to be, uh, instead of just putting in delta, I'm going to actually solve for what delta is. So delta, sine of delta is sine epsilon sine alpha which means that delta is equal to the arc sine of sine epsilon sine alpha. And I'm also going to be substituting in the value for alpha. Um, you cannot, arc sine is also, some of you may have seen it like this, of whatever. Um, I prefer to use the arc sine notation uh, so as to not confuse it with exponentials. Um, so we're going to plug this into the equation. Uh, and check out part two of the video for that because I'm reaching uh, my limit. I can record 15 minutes of video on YouTube, but my computer's been weird, so I've been doing it on my iPod, and apparently you can't do that. So this is the end of part one. Check out part two, which is in the link below, right down there. See it? See it? Look, right down there.